Yeah, welcome back to our lecture on the introductory codezoology that is ZOO 202. You can recall in the last lecture that we introduced the issue of protocol dates and I was able to give you some general features of protocol dates and um, I in that lecture introduced you to the groups of protocol dates which we said that we had uh, we have uh, two living protocol dates and uh, these two living protocol dates are the cephalocodates and the eurocodates which i also made it clear to you that in this class or this lecture i will be handling you on cephalocodates while another lecturer will teach you the euro codes. so let's go into our lecture for the day which is cephalocodates so cephalocodata is the group that the lancelets belong to so under cephalocodates we have the lancelets which are known to be slender laterally compressed and they are usually translucent. What does it mean to say translucent? They are semi-transparent animals, measuring about three to seven centimeters in length. They are also found to inhabit in sandy seg sediments of coastal waters around the world. Don't also forget that we categorically stated that these um, cephalocodates are marine organisms or so I can say they are aquatic so they live in water bodies so for this cephalocodata they are found inhabiting sandy sediments of coastal waters globally then that word lance, uh, from the lancelets however originally bore the generic name amphioxus okay so the usual uh, earlier name given to lancelet is amphioxus which means amphi and oxys both ends sharp all right amphi means both ends then oxys there means sharp later it's uh, surrendered by priority to brachostoma brachostoma where well, it has to do with the branchia, that's the gills, and the mouth, that is stoma. Okay, so if you ask an examination now that you should give three features of cephalocodata, I hope you can be able to do that. Now let's look at the anatomy of the cephalocodates. Let's see what they are made up of. You can see the typical uh, body structure of a cephalocodate that is the amphioxus that we already established they you have or they possess rostrum they possess wheel organ dosal nerve cord notochord dosal fin leocolic ring myome Caudal fin. They also possess anus, ventral fin, intestine, atriopore, hepatic secum, gonad, pharyngeal bars, endostyle, pharyngeal slits, as well as oral hood with tentacles. So, amphioxus have these various features. But remember, one important fact we established in the last lecture is that every protocodate may have some of the four features of a typical codate body plan. Or you could have all of the body features of a codate. All right? So if you look at this uh, structure now, you can also see and agree with me that this amphioxus possesses dosal nerve cord, notochord, pharyngeal slits, endostyles. 
okay so they have the fundamental features of a caudate body plan hence they are proto caudate so they are also known as caudates but remember in that last lecture I, as i stressed that proto has to do with the earliest forms of caudates all right so let's now look at the next slide this amphioxus is still used however as a convenient common name for all of approximately 32 species in this the minutes of phylum so we still call it amphioxus as its common name Amphioxus is also especially interesting because it has the five distinct characteristics of caudates in simple form. Is that noted? The amphioxus has the characteristics of caudate but in simple form. Now, note that water enters the mouth of the amphioxus through the help of the cilia because cilia drives water into the mouth of the amphioxus in the buccal cavity and pharynx then it passes through numerous pharyngeal slits so if for instance you are asked in the examination and you say you are you are told something like this water of amphioxus or water enters into the mouth of amphioxus driven by dash in the dash and dash then passes through numerous dash i hope you can you know answer that question remember the exam most of the times will come as a subjective question but if it doesn't come as a subjective question the key point i want to make here is that you need to read in between lines that is what will help you so you can retain your points the endostyle secretes a mucus sheet on the inner surface of the pharynx. Let's now see a typical uh, amphioxus. You can see the picture. Remember, we said they are semi transparent, that is, they are translucent. You can see how it is transparent. And look at the position it adopts or assumes whenever it is embarking on filter feeding. All right. Then also take note of the oral hood with tentacles surrounding the mouth. Just look up; you will see it. That towards the tip of the of the of the tail, you see the tentacles. So just pay attention to this image and always remember it whenever you are reading the protocodes, especially cephalocodes. Let's also share one or two facts about um, Fuxus. There are no other codes that show the basic diagnostic coded characteristics as clearly as Amphioxus does. So Amphioxus is a true codet. It has all the diagnostic characteristics. It is not among those that have some. It possesses all. In addition to the five coded body anatomical hallmarks of Amphioxus, they also have uh, several other structural features that resemble the vertebrate plan. Some of these features they have in a, as an addendum include a hepatic secum, a diverticulum that resembles the vertebral pancreas in secreting digestive enzymes and the liver in storing glycogen, segmented trunk musculature, and the basic circulatory plan of vertebrates. Let's look at feeding in cephalocodids. How do they feed? First point to note is that the food is trapped on the mucus sheet and then moved by cilia into the gut. Now here the small food particles are separated from the mucus and passed into the hepatic secum. So that hepatic secum gives room for the passage of small food particles 
the mucus sheet helps to trap the food. But then before it goes into the hepatic circuit, it's only the small food particles that, you know, pulls out from the mucus and then enters the hepatic circuit, where they are now phagocytized and digested intracellularly, intra, internal uh, digestion in the cells. They don't do extracellular digestion, they do intracellular digestion. Also know that food is moved through the gut by means of cilia, which are now concentrated in darkly straining area called the iliocolic ring, rather than by muscular contraction as invertebrates. So in the, the difference between uh, the cephalocodids is that they don't um, uh, use muscular contractions in their digestion. Rather, what they do is they move their food through the gut by the means of the cilia. All right? And that cilia is, has a dark listing area which is called the leucolic ring. So, the leucolic ring which I showed you. Let's quickly go back again to that image. Good. You can see the leucolic ring on in this image. Look clearly. Look at it up. After those are finished, you see the iliocolic ring. So that is the spot where feeding of amphioxus takes place. All right. Are you still with me? Are you still learning what I'm sharing with you? Please make sure you are taking your jottings down so you don't forget what you are being taught. As in tunicates, tunicates are uh, the eurocodids. All right. So what happens is that filtered water passes first into an atrium, then leaves the body by an atrial pore. So this just talks about the flow of water in the cephalocodids. Let's now see the circulatory system of cephalocodids. The closed circulatory system is complex. For so simple a codid. You know, we said that the uh, lancelets, that the amphioxus are simple. But they have a complex closed circulatory system that seems so sophisticated for it. All right? But that's how it is made, or how God has uh, created it. That's the biological makeup of the organism. Now, the flow pattern is remarkably similar to that of fishes. Although there is no heart. They don't have heart. Okay? But their circulatory system somehow resembles that of a fish. Now, blood is pumped forward in the ventral iota by peristatic-like constructions of the vessel wall, then passes upward through branchial arteries, aortic arches, in the pharyngeal bars to pair those are aortas, which join posteriorly to become a single dosal aorta. Pick your points. The key point here is that the blood in the body of these cephalocodids is pumped where it's pumped forward in the ventral iota. What enables the pumping of blood into the ventral iota? It is a peristaltic like contractions of the vessel wall. Right? Once the vessel wall uh, assumes that peristaltic movement, it then now passes the blood through the branchial arteries which is found in the pharyngeal bars. Then from there to the dosal iotas. Please pay attention to this. Try to list out the flow of blood in the cephalocodids. That could be a good exam question for you. Now from there, from the single dosal iota, blood is now distributed to body tissues by microcirculation and then is collected in veins which return to the ventral iota. 
collected in veins which now return into the ventral iota. Now, lacking both erythrocyte and hemoglobin, their blood is thought to circulate nutrients but not respiratory gases. Take note of this point. Cephalocodids, they lack erythrocytes and hemoglobin, but their blood circulates nutrients, not respiratory gases. There are no gills specialized for respiration in the pharynx. Gas exchange occurs over the surface of the body. Can you take note of that? Gas exchange occurs over the surface of the body. Very important. Now let's see the nervous coordination or nervous system of cephalocodids. The nervous system is centered around the hollow nerve cord lying above the notochord. Pairs of spinal nerve roots emerge at each trunk myomeric segment. Their sense organs are simple, including an anterior unpaired ocellus that functions as a photoreceptor. Anytime you have photoreceptor, it has to do with, with a sense organ that has to do with light from the word photo. Okay? So they have a very sense, a very simple sense organ that includes an anterior on pedocellus, which functions as a photoreceptor. So they, they use that for, you know, perceiving light in the environment. Although the anterior end of the nerve cord is not enlarged into the characteristic vertebrate brain, it is apparently homologous to parts of the vertebrate brain. Another point to note under the cephalocodate is their reproduction. One point is that their sexes are what? Separate, which means they are dioecious, as we have already established in the last lecture. Their gametes are released in the atrium, then pass through the atriopore to the outside where fertilization occurs. Cleavage in cephalocodates is holoblastic, that is complete, and the grastrula is formed by invagination. Then the larva hatch soon after egg deposition and gradually assume the shape of adults. Until we meet again, I remain Benjamin Ozamna Ononya, your lecturer for ZOO 202, handling you on the protocol dates with special interest in cephalocodates. Anticipate the next video, which will have to do with the assignment or possibly the quiz we'll be having for this course. So, what I recommend is that go through these things over and over again. Make your notes properly and prepare yourself. What you do now is for me to be sure you came for this lecture, dro drop your name and your reg number on the comment section of this video so that I will be sure you are in the class and that will serve as my attendance. Don't forget I said the next time you should be expecting a quiz or assignment. So if I were you, I would start digesting these points by now so that you won't be taken unawares. I wish you the best as you go through your studies. Bye.